Joining me now to discuss is CTV's political commentator and the former leader of the NDP, Tom Mulcair. Tom, good morning. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, Marcia. Good to see you. Um, unfathomable? Aye, aye, aye. That was a great choice of words, actually, by Jagmeet Singh. And I think that for the average Canadian, it is beyond belief that we're even talking about getting into a federal general election right in the middle of the second wave of a pandemic. It is indeed unthinkable. And I think that Mr. Singh has just given us a pretty good indication of, of where he's heading with this. It's Wednesday. That's caucus day in Ottawa. He'll be talking with his troops this morning. But Yesterday, Charlie Angus, who's you know a veteran MP, doesn't back away uh, too often, but uh, he, he's a good musician. I think it only had one note yesterday, and it went something like this. It was beep, beep, beep as he was backing up from the position that he had taken over the weekend, which was clearly to throw in their lot with the Conservatives and fight the Liberals on this. I don't think that's going to happen, because I do think there will be a very heavy political price to pay for the opposition party, certainly at the outset of what would then become an election, but ultimately for the Liberals, because it is irresponsible to even be playing this game of parliamentary chicken. It's very dangerous. OK, so you said a lot there that I want to follow up on. Let's start with the NDP. What do you <clears throat> think Jagmeet Singh is signaling for those of us that need to Need a little clarification on that. Which way are the NDP going to go on this vote? There are probably different parliamentary tricks that they could use. You could see, for example, his Quebec lieutenant, Alexandre Bourris, and Mr. Singh, and perhaps Charlie Angus, the ethics critic, coming in and voting with the Conservatives so that the Liberals will never be able to say that they have the confidence of the NDP, and because that's a, a heavy price to pay long term. But you could see Mr. Singh telling the rest of his troops not to vote on this. That way, the Liberal government survives they have a bit of a face saver and they can move on. I don't think that they've been able to negotiate anything with the Liberals from any indication we've had so far, but if they did negotiate one thing, it would have been that the Liberal committee that they have been pushing for would have an opposition chair. That might be also a bit of a face saver. The Conservatives have done very well in this, but they also overplayed their hand ever so slightly, and they also had to back off because they were giving it an outrageous title that was not parliamentary and it didn't really make any sense. So. Mr. O'Toole is, is proving himself to be a very strong leader, but I think he's got to control some of those elements in his caucus that are a little too enthusiastic. Okay, and what about this gamble then that the Liberals are taking? Clearly, Tom, they're confident that they're going to win um, if there is, in fact, an election. They're confident they'll win. That's what the numbers show right now. Uh, even their members are, are not afraid of an election. The people who support the Conservatives, according to today's polling, really want an election, as do the Bloc voters, the only, and the Greens, the only party whose members are slightly opposed to, to making the government fall, are indeed the NDP voters. There are several reasons why Mr. Trudeau would want an election. He realizes that Aaron O'Toole is no pushover. He's only getting stronger. And that showed again yesterday. His press conference yesterday was masterful. He was incredibly solid. And I can tell you, because it's something I keep an eye on, his French is getting better and better since he got elected. He's obviously paying attention to that because he knows there are a lot of votes for him to go get in Quebec. Mr. Trudeau doesn't want to have to present a budget. How many hundreds of billions of dollars have we actually overspent since the beginning of the pandemic? And don't get me wrong, I think that Mr. Trudeau did the right thing to make sure there was money in families' hands so they could put groceries on the table as everything was shutting down. I think he got that exactly right. But he doesn't want to really show those numbers before the election. So he, there are any number of reasons why Mr. Trudeau would be push, pushing for an election. He'd love to be able to say somebody else did it and not him. But ultimately, as Jagmeet Singh correctly said, it is indeed Mr. Trudeau's choice. Right. So I hear you on all the parties' positions. I am wondering, though, about Canadians. And I know you can't speak for this whole country, no. but do Canadians really want to go to the polls in a pandemic over this issue, Is it, it, over this committee? Is it possible, do you think, that they are end up punishing the Liberals for doing something that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And if the opposition parties make a strong case here that, you know, they're just trying to shut down committees and, and, and prevent this we investigation from going any further. Of course, that's the other really important reason why Mr. Trudeau wouldn't mind going to an election now, because he really doesn't want this committee to take place and dig really deeply into the Wee scandal and all the other scandals that are on the table for his government right now. Today is the first anniversary of his election, yeah. last October, and it would be quite something historically if he were to, to fall over that. I don't think that the average Canadian would be very forgiving. And I think in the very early goings, they'd point their fingers at the opposition parties collectively. But as it went on, people would simply say, Mr. Trudeau, 
You do have a lot to answer for. You're trying to block that in Parliament. You prorogue Parliament. You won't let the committee sit. You have something to hide. And that's the impression that people are going to be left with. Yeah, so let's go full circle here then. If you were the leader of the NDP today, what would you do? I think what I would have done was get ahead of this, because for the second time in a row, like the throne speech, Mr. Singh let the other parties get out there and express their their position right away, which pushed him into a corner. He had a face saver with the throne speech, was which was taking the new employment insurance from 400 to 500, which was the same as the previous emergency fund. I think that he had a bit of a face saver there, and he could walk away saying he had done the right thing for Canadians. Here, he's going to have to find something similar. But I do think that there will be a lot of credit given to him, despite the hesitation, despite the more long-term danger that his voters will say, yeah, but why do we keep backing the Liberals if they're mm -hmm. so bad? Now you're saying they shouldn't be there. But I do think that the average thinking Canadian who doesn't want this vote in the middle of a pandemic, you can just imagine, Marcia, what that would represent in terms of a spike as people all got together to vote. I think the average Canadian is just going to say, high five, Jagmeet Singh. I think you got this one right. All right. We're going to be watching. Um, wow. CTV News political commentator and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair. Tom, thanks for all of your all insight the best. We'll on all this. Know at three, we'll all know at 3.15. Okay. If the technology cooperates. True. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you all soon.